What is going on guys? Today I want to talk a bit about how exactly the open world PvP system works when it comes to flagging yourself and killing other players. For those of you who've watched the nearly two hours of footage Intrepid released on the pre-alpha game, you may have noticed a bit of PvP along with the various colors of nameplates for players in the world. And I'm going to break down what exactly this means for you. Ashes of Creation is a non-faction game, meaning there is no horde or alliance type factions to fight against and join up with. There isn't multiple sides to choose, you choose your race and your class and jump into it, and you will decide who your rivals are when you set out on your adventures, meaning Intrepid is setting us up to be loyal to our guild or our node or just to ourselves, giving players incentives to want to defend the node they live in, along with giving guilds the tools to fight over territories. The lone player out there though will need to be a bit more careful if he wants to engage in PvP. Ashes of Creation has three stages of PvP flagging, the first being the non-combatant, which is given away by the green nameplate. This is the state that all players start in. You're basically neutral, out of the conflict, not looking to pick a fight with any other player, which allows you to not be damaged by other players' AoE attacks. When you die as a non-combatant, you suffer which is stated as normal penalties, which are an experience debt, skill and stat dampening, lower health and mana, and lower gear proficiency. You also take durability loss as expected and have a chance at dropping a percentage of your carried raw material. Keep in mind this is all open for change as we are only in the early alpha stages. For the combatant stage, which is shown off by purple nameplates, you will automatically gain this status if you enter an open world battleground and will maintain this flag for a period of time after leaving. If you die as a combatant, you will suffer the same penalties as a non-combatant, but at half the rate. For a corrupted player, well this is where things get risky. As a corrupted player which is shown with a red nameplate, they will suffer penalties at 3-4 to four times the rate of a non-combatant, and has a chance to drop any carried slash equipped items based on their corruption score, all which can be looted by other players. The only ways to get rid of a corruption status is by dying, or possibly by completing a rigorous quest chain that helps clear it. This system is in place to help prevent the game from turning into a regular gank fest, but by not shutting off PvP completely. You can still freely attack whoever you want in the world, but at a much larger risk. So how exactly do you reach each state of combat? Well, let's say you're a non-combatant to start, and you wish to engage in combat with another non-combatant or a combatant. Doing so will then flag you as a combatant as well, as you have chosen to engage in PvP. But if you, as a non-combatant, come across a corrupted player and attack, there will be no change to your status as the corrupted are evil and should be perished from the world, so feel free to attack any one of them you see. As a combatant, if you decide to attack a non-combatant, well, this is how you gain corrupted status, as you have now chosen to engage in a player who was not flagged for PvP while you were. So if you wanted to gank that low level, it now comes at a greater risk, but if you as a combatant attack another combatant or a corrupted, there will be no change to this status. If you are at the corrupted level and choose to continue to attack non-combatants, then your corruption level will continue to increase along with the amount you may lose when you die. But if you attack a combatant as a corrupted or another corrupted, there will be no change to this status. Losing gear though isn't the only risk of the corrupted. Citizens of a stage 4 military node will be able to acquire a bounty hunter title through questing. This allows bounty hunters to see other corrupted on the map, and the accuracy of the map depends on your progression as a bounty hunter. But if a corrupted player kills a bounty hunter, this will not impact their corruption status. What are your thoughts on the world PvP flagging system in Ashes of Creation? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you are interested in Ashes of Creation at all and have yet to sign up on the website, feel free to use my referral link in the description below. Otherwise, click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.